The rest of the day, we're going to talk about networking. For what you did with problem set three, you didn't really need to get into the network too much. You were calling a function to send data over the network. And after that, it was up to the implementation of the operating system and the networking hardware and everything below that to make those packets arrive. I want to talk more about what's going on underneath that. Networking goes back a long time. It certainly goes back well before this one, but I'm going to use Claude Schaap's semaphore network in France in the 1700s and early 1800s as an example of a fairly sophisticated network that was in operation a long time ago. The way that network worked, you had these towers. The towers would have an operator or two working in them. You would align the arms of the tower. You could turn these things to align in different ways, and depending on how the arms were aligned, it sent a different symbol. And the symbols were basically the letters of the alphabet, but some of them could be multiple letters at once. So we had this configuration was enough to send CH. They had mobile access nodes. They're fairly big, but you could move them around, which was pretty useful when you were fighting wars and you needed to communicate. So the properties that we care about for networks are often confused. We want to make sure we understand what the two are. So there's latency. What latency means is the time it takes to start getting something. When you're talking about the measurements for your servers, latency is the time it takes from when you send a request till you start getting the response. This is going to be in units of time. It might be time per distance. If the latency varies depending on how far away you are, which is inherent in all communication at some level, you can't make things go faster than the speed of light, then latency really should be in terms of time per geographic distance. The other property is bandwidth. And bandwidth is how much information can you send in some unit of time. The initial latency doesn't really affect the bandwidth. Once you've got the data streaming as fast as you can go, the bandwidth is how much can you transmit per second. This is going to be in units like bits per second, or megabytes per second, or gigabits per second. Some unit of information divided by some unit of time. In terms of the results here, what's the latency result? Which one is measuring latency? Yeah, the response time. So this is latency, really defined exactly as latency is. Which is measuring bandwidth? Are we measuring bandwidth? Can you tell what the bandwidth of the server is from these results? Would you need to know something else to tell the bandwidth? Good. So the duration time is a proxy for bandwidth. Assuming that each of these servers is sending the same amount of data, this is related to bandwidth. To turn this into bandwidth, we need to know how much data. The test was actually doing 280 megabytes of data total. Not a huge amount, but enough that at least it seems the results are sort of stable. Certainly, if we did a longer test with more data, the results might be more meaningful. And that gives us a bandwidth for the top server was 6 megabytes per second. Do we like that for both of these? How would we decide if these are good results? If we're getting 6.8 milliseconds per request and 6 megabytes per second. Do those seem like good results, or at least it's better than Apache, so it's not horrible. How close are we getting to what we really should expect, or what we would think are the best, best possible results? We have to look at a lot more things to answer that. From this alone, well, we don't know where the costs are. We'd have to understand a lot more about that to know how close to the maximum results these are. So let's look at Napoleon's network. One of the paths on his network was from Paris to Toulon, 475 miles. The latency for that, so the time it would take starting from Paris to reach Toulon, was 13 minutes, going through all of these semaphore towers. And I, I should mention, these are called semaphores. Totally different meaning from how we're going to use semaphores after spring break and how they're normally used in the operating system. So it's going through these towers. It takes 13 minutes. That's a rate of 1.6 seconds per mile which for the 1800s is actually pretty good. It would make us pretty unhappy if it took an hour to send a message to California today. The bandwidth is determined, well, how many symbols can you send per minute? So that's about two per minute. So it takes time for the operators to move those arms, and then you've got to wait until the person at the next tower sees it. So you could do that about twice a minute. That means the bandwidth you're getting depends on how much information you can convey. So there are 98 different symbols, so it's going to take about 18 days to download the course site. If we want to improve the latency, and we're still talking about Claude Schaap's network, what are the things you would need to do to improve latency? Suppose Napoleon comes to you and says, I am not happy with it taking 13 minutes to send a message to Toulon. How could you make it faster? Yes. Good. You could smack the guys in the tower and tell them to stop being so lazy, move your arms faster. 
maybe you succeed. Maybe they were sort of lazy and not moving the arms very fast. Moving them twice a minute seems pretty good. These are pretty big arms. Maybe you can't do too much better. What else could you do to improve latency? Yes. Good, yeah. So you could have less transfers. If we can make these further apart, then there's less transfer time. Our message is going to travel faster. How hard is it to make them further apart? What's the main constraint on how far apart they can be? Let's say we can give them telescopes. We had pretty good telescopes by 1800. What's the real limit on how far apart the towers can be? I think I heard that. Yeah? The curve of the Earth, exactly. If you want them to be further apart, and you want to still see the next one, this is not to scale. Right? This is the curve of the Earth. Those are our arms. We've got to make the towers taller. And making towers taller is expensive. The Earth is curving. There's a limit to how far apart you can see without making the towers taller. Is there anything else we could do to improve latency? OK, good. So if we, if we improve the coding, would that reduce latency? So remember, we're de defining latency as the time from when you make a request to when you start getting the response. So if we improve the encoding, is that going to affect the latency? Exactly. So it's going to improve bandwidth. It's probably still going to make Napoleon happier. But it's not going to really affect the latency. It's not going to affect the time it takes to start getting the response. It might take the time it takes to get the whole message, which is the latency we really care about. But it's not going to affect that too much, because that's mostly the time it takes for the first message to get across the network. So the only other thing we could really do, we can have fewer transfers. We can make the transfers faster. Maybe the time it takes to travel between the transfer points. In this case, we're not going to make that faster. That's already the speed of light. We don't have any other real option. These are the same for any kind of communication. We're going to make our network faster if we have fewer transfers. If we don't want to build towers tall enough, but still deal with the curve of the Earth, we can use wires, because wires can curve. And if we have fiber optic cables, then we can make light go around corners. The inner transfer travel, well, for SHAP's network, that didn't matter too much, because it's already the speed of light, and we're pretty sure we can't do better than that. For the networks that have been replaced, when they were copper networks, you can only go about a third the speed of light in copper. So turning those into fiber optic does improve speed quite a bit. Right? If you can get up to the speed of light, once you've made the transfers fast enough and reduced the transfers as much as you can, then the inner transfer time actually matters. And once you get close to the speed of light, there's not a lot you can do to improve that.